Good morning, everybody. Praise the Lord, everyone. How is everybody doing this Sunday morning? Hallelujah. We are glad to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Once again, Hallelujah. it happens to be that the house of the Lord this morning for you may be your living room, your bathroom, or wherever room you might be in right now to celebrate this first Sunday with us here at Inspired Life Ministries, yes. where we are hoping that we are inspiring you to live out God's plan for your life and to complete every assignment that he gives you. Amen. 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 Welcome again, IOM family. Hey, hey, hey. Yes, it is Sunday morning. Amen. It's the day that the Lord has made. Let all of us rejoice. rejoice. And be glad in it. That's right, Pastor. Rejoice and be glad in this beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning. So let us get into the word of God this morning. Are you ready? Amen. Well, we have carefully studied and we've prayed and we have sung some praises before we got on here with you. And now we're ready to embark upon communicating the word of God with you. Amen. Amen. Are you ready to preach with us yes. this morning? Huh? We thank God for you sharing the message. We thank God for you liking and subscribing to our channel. We believe <clears throat> that we cannot preach without you. So we thank God for the fact that you are with us. Sending the message to your friends, sending the message to different people. We praise God for your commitment to Inspired Life Ministries to help us spread the gospel Hallelujah. of Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Well, let me ask you a question. Let's start off this morning, Pastor. I want to have a discussion with our family. Okay. <clears throat> Is that okay? Mm -hmm, absolutely. All right. Family, let me ask you a set of questions because I'm just curious as to where you are. And, and before I tell you the question, I need you to understand that I've asked myself this question, all right? And I found some answers that shocked me. And I want to ask you, when it comes down to your favorite stars, your favorite celebrities, who would yours be? Live chat. Live chat. Who your favorite ce in. celebrity? Uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, musically, for me. One of my favorite, if not the favorite, uh, artist would be, I know, don't judge me, but Prince. <laughs> I used to love Prince. I think is an awesome artist. Amen. And I think of how I felt while watching movies with a minute or listening to his music when I was younger mm -hmm. and how excited I would get and how that feeling that you have when you see a star or a famous person that you value, how you actually feel about that person and what you're willing to do to see them, how much you're willing to pay to see them, how many records are you going to buy of theirs? You follow what I'm saying? Yes. How many posters will you have up on your wall? What? How will you exactly follow them? Amen? Amen. And who would be yours, Pastor? <laughs> so I have two when I was growing up. It was Mike. Gotta be there. <laughs> <laughs> dancing, dancing, dancing. Mm, mm, mm. Dancing Dance machine. machine. Michael Jackson. Okay, okay. <laughs> and Stacy Loudasaw. Oh, Stacy. Yeah, I gotta share this with you all real quickly. My um brother, when we were children, I had Stacy Loudasaw and I would play this song, Let Me Be Your Angel. I ain't gonna even try to do that tune because she could blow, right? Yeah, I feel And you. so he was like Every time he would like walk past my room, cause he was such, he was so comical. He would walk past my room. He'd be like, Shelly, you know, like what? He's like, let me be your angel. <laughs> so anyway, that was it for me. Stacy Lawson and Michael Jackson. Stacy and Mike. Yeah. Stacy and Mike. Yeah. Stacy and Mike. Well, and you gonna tell me Mike wasn't singing to me, but I think for any. You thought he was singing to you? Yeah. Right on, but sister. I learned that. He was just singing. Mike was singing for me to you. All right. All okay. Right. He was dedicating. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> I ain't know him there, but he was doing it for me. Amen. So listen, the reason why I'm asking you about your favorite artist, because I want you to follow me in the train of thought that I'm having this morning. Mm -hmm. I'm having a train of thought that wasn't it almost like a cult? 
You know, they even call followers of stars like that, the cult generation or the cult, the you know, cult following, right? Mm. It's, think about it. When you think of cult, you think negative, don't you? Yes. You think drinking Kool-Aid, don't you? But what if I were to tell you that thinking about your favorite star and the way you act towards your favorite star is a cult-like behavior? Mm. Mm, yeah, it is. And what if I were to tell you that even though you have become saved, you've gotten in the body of Christ now, what if I told you that you brought that same mentality over in the body wow. and you apply it now to different preachers who have uh, fame, who have this celebrity like way about them and you're mm -hmm. now attaching your affections and you're following to that person. Mm -hmm. Let me go ahead and describe some characteristics of, well, let me just define it. Yes. How about that? Let's define a cult. A cult, if you're taking notes, is a system of religious veneration. Veneration is like lifting up as a deity, a saint, mm -hmm. okay? Yes. So a religious saint or veneration and devotion directed towards a particular figure or individual mm -hmm. or an object. Okay. Sounds a lot like idolatry. Right. Which is an object that you place above God, God right? That's right. Yes. Okay, just yes, consider pastor. this now. Now, a cult follower, the, the, the common modern definition of a cult is a group of people with extreme dedication yes. to a certain leader mm. or a certain set of beliefs that are often viewed as odd by others. Wow. It's not necessarily as popular, but if you look at them and say, wow, that's odd. That That's odd that they play with snakes, or that's odd that they chant, or that's odd that they do this or mm -hmm. do that. But they're doing this or that because of the following of a leader. Wow. Okay? So the reason why I took the time to, 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 to conversate with you about this this morning, because we want to examine this morning the difference between, or maybe I should ask you a question. Here's the question. Are you a cult follower or a disciple? Mm. Are you a cult follower or a disciple? A disciple. So here we have 1 Corinthians chapter 1. I want to begin reading at verse number 12, right, Pastor? I believe so. Yes, it is. And here we have a discussion going on and I want you to pay careful attention to how they phrase this discussion. Amen. Okay. I'm reading from the New King James translation, 1 Corinthians chapter um 1 verse beginning at verse 12. And it reads in this manner, "Now I say this that each of you says, I am of Paul or I am of Apollos, hmm. or I am of Cephas, That's and Peter. I am of Christ. Hmm. 13, is Christ divided? Was hmm. Paul crucified for you? Hmm. Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? My God. Verse 14, I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius. Amen. Now, the reason why I pointed that scripture out, because even back then in the biblical context of the current church, they had idolatry going on. Mm -hmm. They had people saying, well, I'm of Apollos. And another person says, well, I'm of Paul. Mm -hmm. You know, well, I'm of Peter. I, I sit at the table with Peter. Mm -hmm. I sit at the table with Apollos, right? Yeah. So what we do in our modern day time, we say, I go to Inspired Life Ministries. Or I go to First Baptist of this, or I go to the Potters, or I, wherever you go, mm -hmm. you say it with such a following. And it could be because you're looking at the leader, mm -hmm. the leader, mostly the leader. And, and I believe that even at that day, Christ was trying to have us to follow him. Yes, yes, yes. So when you turn to Matthew, mm -hmm. Chapter 28, yeah. you'll see that Jesus gave us some instructions 
Okay, amen. Can I just read um, oh, yes. these next two verse, three verses still in First Corinthians? Okay. So fifteen says, least thank you, Pastor. Yes. Least anyone should say that I had baptized in my own name. Yes, I also baptized the household of Stephanonis. Besides, I do not know whether I baptized any other. 17, for Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be of no effect. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, amen, amen, amen. And as we look at Matthew, Matthew chapter 28, 28 mm-hmm. We'll see what Jesus told us to do. Right. And this is dealing with the Great Commission. And I'm going to start at verse 16. It says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. 17. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. I'm going to say that again. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven Amen. and on yes. earth. 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end Amen. of the age. Amen. 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 And what did he say he was asking them to do? Make disciples. Disciples. That's right. That's disciples. right. Disciples. So in this message today, and maybe we won't finish it today, but I just was curious about the question: Are you a cult follower? Mm. Or are you a disciple? And see, wh when it comes down to the word of God, we're trying to get understanding of the word yes, of God. Yes, Amen? Yes. And so I just wanted to examine my actions. And so when we're doing so, I found that there were times in my Christian walk where I uh, followed a preacher that I liked. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Or, or, And it wasn't necessarily in my mind that I was following that preacher right. as far as it relates to like a cult. But what I noticed is, Come matter of fact, Paul says, follow me as I, as I what? Follow, follow Christ. Christ. Yes. Amen. Yes. So he's suggesting, yes, follow me, mm -hmm. but only as I follow Christ. Yes. But sometimes you and I, we get caught up in personalities in yes. the gospel. Yes. The swagger or the or or the or the personality or the way of being of preachers yes. and we follow them and we like them so much so that we when we say for instance uh when I was going to a a, a bigger church and the people would find out that the pastor's going to be absent that day, mm -hmm. they wouldn't show up. Wow. You follow me? They wouldn't even come to church because their favorite pastor or preacher wasn't there. And so that kind of behavior I have participated in as well. Mm -hmm. This is the, the past for me. But the bottom line is it's when you gravitate toward a personality mm -hmm. of the gospel rather than Jesus Christ or rather than being disciplined in your actions yeah. about being a disciple of Christ. Yeah. Instead of being a disciple, you're more focused on being a follower. Yeah. But it may be that you might be cultish in your following. Yeah. If you are esteeming that individual up high, especially if you esteem them above Christ. Yeah, amen. I think one of the things, Pastor, that we have to be very careful with is that um in doing that that when we put people on a pedestal and we're not keeping Christ center and we don't keep him on the throne at the throne that if that person in leadership falls or disappoint you and if they're not being held accountable then we'll excuse the sin yeah and that should not be yeah. because God, as even in Matthew 28, as um, we read it, verses 19 through 20, saying, go and make disciples, you know, 
teach them, let them learn of me, that God has given us the authority yeah. to teach and preach Jesus. Mm -hmm. And God will do the increase for whatever he wants to give or bring out or put in that person. Absolutely. Yeah. Pastor. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. He will. He and will. so here it is. We should always desire yeah. to grow spiritually and deepen our relationship with the Lord. The word that is often attached to spiritual growth is discipleship, right? Mm -hmm. That's correct. So we have many programs. We have many books. There are many ministries, small groups, cell groups um, in churches, outside of churches that have discipleship yeah. somewhere in its title. But it is our quest to grow, or at least it should be, as disciples. Uh -huh. Um, oftentimes we can get overwhelmed because there's so many options out there. So how should we understand discipleship biblically and what does it look like to grow as a disciple? Yes. Um, I think that's a very important question. What does it look like to grow mm -hmm. as a disciple? Mm -hmm. I believe that, um, did you want to answer it first? No. Past them? I believe that what it looks like growing as a disciple is that I can acknowledge my shortcomings that I can take responsibility for what I've done or didn't do or what I said or did not say that did not line up with the word of God. Yeah. That is one way to look at, um, am I growing as a disciple? Because I should not be in um, the body of Christ having accepted Jesus. I'm going to use the number five. Five years ago, I accepted Christ, but now five years later, I'm still at that same state. That okay, there should be okay. a desire for me to grow um, into this divine relationship with Christ. Amen. So that's I think that's one of the ways. Mm -hmm. A disciple is simply a follower of Jesus Christ, and I think that we had that on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. So discipleship is in, intentionally, intentionally, we have to be intentional about it. In creating space to help people grow as disciples, people are gonna make some mistakes. You make mistakes. I make mistakes. We make mistakes. But it's about having the the mindset and the intent of the heart to be intentional in creating space. First of all, I need to create space that I'm gonna grow yes. in my relationship with Christ. But as I am making disciples of Jesus, not making disciples of me but making disciples of Jesus Christ that they may go and baptize and teach and, 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 and so that others will learn about who God is, that you, you allow people to grow. Mm. There's still some things that all of us are growing in that we've not yet been delivered or healed from, right? Some of us still have some struggles in some certain areas. We might be struggling with forgiving someone. We might be struggling in in, in still walking in the spirit of manipulation. We might be struggling in, in an addiction, but you have to create space to allow people to grow. And when they miss the mark, Remind them, therefore, there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Remind them that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Remind them that, okay, now this is an opportunity for you to repent. We look at, um, in, in the New Testament, there's a clear emphasis on discipleship. Yes, it is. We just read it, right? Making disciples was central to the ministry of Jesus Christ while he was here on the earth. And he did what? He invested deeply in a smaller group of men and invited them to follow him in Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. He said, come on, I'm going to make fisher, fisher, you, you fishers of men, right? Absolutely. He was talking about that. what? Souls, right? Yes. So we see in the Great Commission as Jesus calls us to continue his work by making disciples of all nations. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't have any prejudice and there should not be any biases of any one particular culture or one particular um, ethnicity group or based on somebody's size or based on their complexion of all nations. Absolutely. Discipleship is evident throughout the early church as Paul's disciples, Timothy, so that he could invest in others. Second Timothy chapter two and verse two is where you can find that. And older men and women are encouraged to disciple the younger generation. Where is that, Pastor Shelley? In Titus chapter two, verse seven. But let me say this, as an older man, as an older woman, how are you going to be, how are you going to encourage to disciple the younger generation if you don't have the word deeply rooted inside of you? We have lost 
a generation, so they say. But it's not too late for the body of Christ to reach back. If you got to snatch them back, to teach them, to let them learn of who Jesus is. We can't continue to move generation after generation and allowing this world to be as perverse as it is and not teach what we know, but still be open because as you're growing and you're making um, intentional space, you're creating that intentional space to grow spiritually and to disciple someone that they too will take on that same attitude. It'll be a cheerful attitude in their heart that they're so in love with this great Jesus that they would want to have the desire to disciple someone else. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we have to be intentional in pursuing others. It can be intimidating to ask someone to meet with you for discipleship. But sometimes we make the gospel like it's non-effective. Mm -hmm. But it's so effective. Think about where you are spiritually. Think about where you were before you gave your life to Christ. Yes. Isn't your life much better on today, mm -hmm. now that you're saved, than what it was prior to your salvation? My, my, my. So, who challenges you to grow spiritually? Come on. Live chat. Yes. Communicate with us, please. Who holds you accountable? Yes. Good question. So, who challenges you to grow spiritually? Who encourages you to think of Christ more than you think of yourself? See, that's a good one right there. Sometimes we're a little bit too self-absorbed. Self-love, nothing wrong with that. But it should not be over Christ. Amen? Yes. Who is strong in areas where you're weak? All of us can identify or should be able to identify that somebody else is stronger than us in another area. Like, I, I have some areas where I'm weak, where my husband is strong, and vice versa. He has some areas where he's not as strong in, where mm -hmm. I'm stronger in. Mm -hmm. But it's not a competitive thing, and it's not a comparison, but it's being right. able to recognize and to acknowledge that where he's weak, I can strengthen him, and vice versa. But it should be like that for the body of Christ. Absolutely. Not pride, not being competitive, but creating that, that space with intentionally that person can be able to grow, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Question, do you look for believers in your life that have the character and maturity that you desire to emulate? Not envy, hmm. not be jealous of, but is there somebody that you know of or are there, do you look for believers who have the maturity and the character hmm. that you desire to emulate? And, and we should be saying just like Paul, right? Follow me as I follow Christ. But it shouldn't just be a word or a sentence that we're saying, but that our lifestyle is lining up. That I'm not getting on here ministering, and then when you see me outside of the broadcast, that I'm cussing somebody out, or that I'm, um, I'm tearing somebody's character down. No, that's not creating space. To be a disciple, to disciple someone. Amen. Mm -hmm. You want to say something, Pastor? No. Mm -hmm. when, when you look at Titus chapter 2, it starts off with the craft of an image of an ideal disciple relationship. And because of time's sake, we won't be able to look at it th this morning. When we dream of someone, of being older than us, right? Yes. Who has the Holy Spirit prompted to disciple you? Or who have you been prompted by to be discipled by? Right? That's a two-part question. Like, and, and I think we had it in the the lesson with um legends, uh, legend and prodigy, right? Yes. We should always have someone that we can emulate their character. Absolutely. Yeah. And their spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. Because if we're gonna deepen our relationship with Christ, it's about creating that intentional space to be able to grow spiritually and really being patient with each other right right so be purposeful with your time we talked about purpose on wednesday right and we're going to talk about it again 
on on the following Wednesday if, 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 if the Lord says so. There are many ways that we can grow as disciples in the body of Christ or as servants as Christ, right? From Bible studies to um, sitting down, having tea With or coffee, yeah. taking a walk in the park. Like, what a great way to be able to disciple because you can talk about God's creation, right? The flowers, the trees, the birds, all of those things. Um, and whether you are in a discipleship group or desire to pursue discipleship, make sure your time together when you're with that disciple or when you're being discipled, that it is focused. It has a clear focus. Amen. Amen. Reflect on yes. some questions like, how do we spend the bulk of our meeting time? Like, what are we really focused on? Who or what is the focus? Who or what is the focus? In the, in, in, in the content focus, is the content focused on self-improvement or greater dependency on Christ? Mama. Because if you're discipling someone or if you're being discipled, right? There's some liquid gold right here, y'all. Y'all need to write this nugget yes, down. write it down. That the greater dependence should be focused on Christ mm -hmm. and not self. Amen. Amen. Yeah. What is the greatest benefit of our time together? So it doesn't mean that you can't have a good time, but it's a time and place for everything. So if we're, if we're being discipled and or if we're discipling someone, let that focused time really be centered on Christ so mm -hmm. that we can learn to depend and rely on mm -hmm. Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. amen. Pastor Kofi. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, when we are talking about discipling, it denotes that you have a relationship with God. That's with right. With Jesus Christ. Yes. When we're talking about cult following, it denotes you have a relationship with the esteemed perception that you have of that individual. So what we're asking this morning is that you take your eyes off of the person and put it on the personage of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Just become a follower of Christ. Yes. And become disciplined at your following Christ. Yes. And I'm not saying don't enjoy the personality, the swagger, and the presentation <laughs> of other people. What I'm saying is don't be so caught up in that, that you end up following the person and not the Christ. I'm going to say that again. Don't be so caught up in it yeah. that you end up following the person and not the Christ that they represent. That's right. Amen. And so hopefully Amen. you've seen some value in our message this morning. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we're Amen. asking that today, this very morning, yeah. that you reach out to him and that you ask for his life or ask for his acceptance of you and coming into your life. Also, while you're at that, why don't you get some power and ask him to fill you full of his Holy Spirit. Right. And then you will become a disciple. Yeah, Amen. Hallelujah. A disciple. He says, baptizing them and teaching them and, and having them to teach in my name. So when you are baptized, amen, amen. He, he, you, you, you receive the power to be able to put to death those things that you struggle with that's all right. of your life. That's right. Amen. And so if that's you, Raise your hand where you are. Ask the Lord to come in and he's right there to save you, which I will tell you this, that allows you to be qualified yeah. to take communion with us yes. this morning. We ask that you take your bread and your wine, i.e. juice, and celebrate the Lord's Supper with us this morning. Yes. For he said... That whenever you do this, Hallelujah. I want you to do it in remembrance of me. Yes. Remembrance of him. Why? Because in this, this depiction right here, the broken body of the Lord Jesus Christ and the depiction of the shed blood of Jesus Christ is what you want to do in remembering the fact that Jesus came that he lived, that he performed the miracles, and that he died for you. Amen? Amen? That he died for you. And that's the thing you never want to forget. So Jesus is encouraging us in the Last Supper to do this often. Yes. And when you do it often, as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of what I did for you. That's right. Amen. Jude, you know, Jesus gathered the 
disciples, right? The disciples together. Amen. And on the night that he was betrayed yeah. by Judas, he was sitting at the area and he took bread. And after he had given thanks for it, he broke it and shared it with them. And he said, this is the broken body, mm. my broken body. I want you to take it and eat it. And as you do, remember that my body was broken for you. Yes, thank you, Lord. Take and eat. The Bible says that likewise, in the same manner, yes. he took the cup. And when he had given thanks for it, he said, take, drink. This is my blood. It's the New Testament. My blood that was shared for you to create an opportunity for you Hallelujah. to change your thank life you, from what it was and now have eternal life. Yes, thank you. I'm as God. often as you drink, do it in remembrance of me. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, hopefully you've been able to take communion with us this morning hallelujah hallelujah you've hallelujah. been able to get your life right this morning and what i did not get the chance to tell you prior to us taking our communion was to examine yourself so it's okay still examine yourself and see if you are worthy to have taken communion and usually what we're doing upon examination is finding out some things because there always are some things about us that we can allow the Holy Spirit to put to death. Yes, amen? amen. Allow the Holy Spirit to correct in our lives. Yes. And so that's what we want you to do as you have communion with us. Always examine your life and allow the God you serve Hallelujah. to fix your situation by causing you to modify your behavior. Amen. Well, that's all the time we amen. have this morning. Our time is up. We thank you for yours. And always remember, ILM, we loves love you. you. But more importantly, God, God loves, loves you. you. Peace. God bless you.